Hey YouTube friends, SurvivalCraft here. I went up to see my brother who is building a house in Cleveland, Tennessee. He's, he's building starter homes and he's just now getting done with one. He wanted me to come see it, check it out. So I went up there and right across the street is a farm. And at the edge of this farm, there is a fence and growing up in the fence was mullen. And mullen is a great weed. It doesn't really have any edible qualities, but it has some amazing medicinal qualities and it can actually have some pretty practical uses. So those are the things that we're gonna be covering in this video. Let's first talk about how to identify this plant. It's actually pretty easy to identify once you get a, a knack for looking for it. It sometimes is right along the ground in a large rosette, but if left alone and if it has good nutrients and things like that, it will shoot up to about three or so feet tall and be very wide, sometimes just as wide as it is tall. The leaves are huge. And it, so it sticks out <laughs> because it's such a large plant. Now, that's what it looks like in the first year. In the first year it grows, it only has leaves. But it will continue to live straight through the winter and all the way through the spring and in the early summer, the second year, the plant will just shoot up and it'll grow six, seven feet tall. And it'll have a, a sharp spike at the top that's just covered in yellow flowers. And at that point, it's really easy to identify because it's probably one of the largest weeds out there. Up close, you can tell this plant is mullen by the hairiness of the leaves. And I really, uh, until you feel one of these things, you just don't know what I mean by hairiness. This thing is ridiculously hairy. So much so that it doesn't even feel like it's a plant. It feels like you're holding some weird synthetic like dish towel. I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. It's just incredibly hairy. And it's actually that hairiness, that fullness to these leaves that give it some of its more uh, practical properties, which we'll uh, explain in a minute. But right up close on it, it's actually really easy to identify because of that hairiness. And in its second year, look for those flowers. Now let's talk about some of its medicinal uses. Uh, you can pretty much break them down into two groups. Medicine that's drawn from the leaves and medicine that's drawn from the flowers. Now if you're going to draw medicine from the leaves, you need to make sure it's a first year mullen. The reason is, is because the leaves lose a lot of their potency once those flowers start to bloom because it's taking all the potency and it's sending them to the flowers. So second year should be used for the flowers, first year mullen should be used for the leaves. Now the leaves can be dried, that's actually why I've picked these because I'm going to be drying them. The leaves can be dried and smoked for lung congestion problems and for throat problems. In fact, it was used by the Native Americans quite often for a um, kind of like anti-bronchitis uh, smoke. So you can use it for that. You can also use the leaves for a tea. Uh, steep it, make it a tea, and it's great for colds and flus. Uh, in fact, the oils in the mullen have an antiviral property, so it makes them really good for that. Now, dry, um, not dry, but uh, fresh like this, these can be used as emergency bandages because they are so um, puffy and because they can absorb liquids, they do make really good emergency bandage for wound care. 
And then finally, the leaves can be boiled, and then you take them like this, but boiled, and you lay them on inflammation, uh, inflamed areas, and it will bring down the inflammation, and it will help to relieve the pain caused by inflammation. So, all in all, these leaves are a great thing to have around. Then we have the flowers, and the flowers can be steeped in olive oil for three weeks, and then you can apply that tincture in drops to chap skin, hemorrhoids, and especially earaches. In fact, in Europe it's still used in earache medicine, maybe in the U.S., but definitely in Europe. And you just apply that to the area over a few days, and it will begin to help the ailment, whether that be chap skin, frostbite, hemorrhoids, earaches, things like that. Now let's move on to its practical uses. Pliny, the Roman scholar, uh, said that he wrapped figs in mullein leaves and it would keep them from rotting as quickly. So that's something I'd like to test. I'd like to wrap some fruit and vegetables in this mullein to see if it'll last longer. That's actually another reason why I've picked a bunch of these leaves. And I'll be doing that. If it works, I'll do, be doing a video on it. Also, this stuff can be doubled up, tripled up, whatever, and used kind of like gloves. For instance, if you're going out and you're trying to get uh, thistles, thistles being a good source of natural cordage. If you're looking to get thistles, then you can wear these on your hands if you don't have gloves to protect you from the spikes. Uh, the Greeks also used these leaves dry and by, by making them into lamp wicks. And I think that's a really interesting idea, especially if you have some oil. I know the Native Americans in my area used cockle... I, I always say this wrong. Cockle burr? <laughs> cockle burr uh, seeds. They would, they would take the fresh seeds, they would strain them for the oils, and they would use that as lamp oil. Uh, so if you had the ability to do that, if you found some and you had some mullein dried out, you could potentially make a lamp out of that. Uh, the Romans used to take the big long stalks of mullein, they would strip them of their leaves, dip them in tallow, and then they would use them as torches. So specifically for funerals, but that would be a good way of you, for instance, if you had to travel at night, or if you wanted to enter a cave, maybe clear out of cave, clear out some uh, den or whatever, that would be a decent way of, of doing so, because you could make a torch out of them if you had the tallow. And then finally, the seeds. The seeds of the plant you should stay away from, because they are toxic, but they're especially toxic to fish. So I've read before where people will take the seeds of the mullein and they'll take them and they'll put them into a pool of fish, uh, a pool that you've blocked off with rocks. They'll drop them in there and after about an hour, the fish will just kind of float to the top. And you pick them off, you take them over, you boil them or you cook them uh, over a fire and you've got yourself fish. <laughs> So, uh, these are all things to keep the mullein in mind for. And so, go out there, do more research. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't even cover in this video. Mullein just has so many different uses. So, go out there, do some research. Maybe you'll find something really interesting. And if you do, please share it in the comment section below. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, again, please put them in the section below. And as always, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.